All right. Hello, everybody. Today is Saturday, July the 30th. Welcome back to the Daily Digital Show. My name is Junior, and I would like to talk to you guys here today about four new things. Well, really not new thing, but four things that you may not even heard about before uh, in our digital world. Of course, you know this show is all about me making sure that you stay well up to date with what's going on in our digital world. Um, the first one is going to be about NBA, how the NBA is actually getting into the metaverse. The next one is a uh, little known company called Crocs, how they are shifting gears a little bit by stepping into the NFT space as well. Uh, the next one is something that a lot of people may not even understand. Uh, I'm pretty sure you all heard of Ethereum before, but did you know that Ethereum has different codes and standards that they abide by? Uh, if not, we're going to be touching on a couple of those or the most standard ones. And the last one here is going to be about how AI technology is actually taking like, I would say, two-year-old crayon sketches into actual landscape artwork. It's actually pretty amazing. I can't wait to share with you guys. Stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. Okay, so the first item on the block here is about the NBA. The NBA, uh, or actually a well-known team up in my home state of New York, the Brooklyn Nets have actually created the Netiverse. So Netiverse starting with the N as in Brooklyn Nets. And as you can see here, they are actually taking the Metaverse into their hands and transforming into what they feel uh, is best for their space. So again, with the Metaverse, every company, every person is going to be utilizing it for their own benefit uh, in their own ways. We are currently right now in the trough of everything, so in the valley. And as you can see here, everything is going to start spiraling upwards um, until we get to its peak of what the metaverse uh, and this whole digital space can actually provide. Uh, so what they are actually doing is they're taking like, it's like 500 cameras, uh, more than 100 Canon cameras surrounding the entire Barclays Center, where is where they play um, their basketball games in New York. And they're actually utilizing those cameras to take a um, virtual image of all of the players in real time. Uh, there's a video on this here as well that I'm going to show you guys, but I just want to kind of get the gist of it out. Uh, but they're taking real time video of these um, players actually playing in real time and they are simulating it in a video game like uh, sense. Um, so what they are end up doing is giving you a full on, um, and yeah, here's a video here. They're giving you basically a full on view of every single play that's going on. Uh, you're no longer going to be looking at the screen from the nosebleed. You can actually probably use a VR device headset and everything like that as well in order to view what's going on in the game. Uh, being right next to each one of the players, hearing them breathe, seeing all of their eye movements and everything. Uh, and it's kind of actually weird because if you look very closely, um, these players are actually looking more virtual. So it looks like digital characters and stuff like that that you would actually see in an NBA 2K video game for the PS5, Xbox, or something like that. Um, and then also from there, they are um, taking it a little bit step further as far as like the replays and stuff like that goes as well. Um, the owner of the Brooklyn Nets, uh, he actually mentioned a few things here. Also, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, yeah, a lot of times you get caught following the ball. Obviously, you don't want to miss the ball going in the basket, but you don't always get all 10 players on the court from all different angles. There will never be a play again where I don't have an angle or I don't have a look at it. As far as replays, we can use it for dunks on the game. We can use it for Joe Harris three-point shooting to show how he got open. Uh, we can use it for Kevin Durant's vision. So you can actually get a real sense of what these players are doing inside of the game. Uh, and that has never really been done before. You know, you see the ball moving here to the left, to the right, to the shooting guard, point guard, or whatever. But you never actually get a feel for, all right, how, was these, how are these players actually making these calls? Uh, and this is going to be really big when it comes to actually training videos as, uh, as far as that as well. Uh, and you can kind of see the guy here. He is the headmaster, I guess you want to call him. He's the one that's kind of controlling all of the camera angles and stuff like that during the game. Um, so what you can actually do is like, hey, if you want to just say, I want to follow one player. Like, I just want to follow Kevin Durant during the game. 
I don't want to follow anybody else. I just want to follow him, what he does, how he operates. You can actually do that using one of these, uh, what they say, over 100 cameras and stuff like that. Um, and it's all going to be kind of like in a VR sense. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this video here. Let me see. I'm going to make it kind of full screen. And there's no sound to it. But, yeah, look at how these characters look. And you can kind of see it gets a little bit choppy here as well. But again, we're, we're at the bottom right now. We're just really trying to figure out what we can do um, with the. And you see how it gets a little bit choppy there. Uh, we're really trying to figure out what we can do with this metaverse, with all this virtual technology um, and then kind of expand on it. So, I mean, they can really get these players to look like they are in real time as well. Yeah, I mean, look how close we are to the whole action of everything. Nice play, nice play. Go for it. And I mean, you never see stuff like that where it just pauses and rotates the camera and everything uh, inside an actual game or anything like that. You, you only see that in video games. And now they're actually taking that video game sense and bringing that into the real world, which is a really powerful thing, especially, like I said, with this digital era jumping off the metaverse. A lot of people don't understand what the metaverse actually is. It's not actually just going into a virtual space using a virtual reality headset. It's really about connecting that virtual world uh, into our actual physical world. And that's why I've mentioned it plenty of times before. I'm in love with AR technology, augmented reality, um, just because of that, you know? Um, so yeah, so you guys definitely check out, keep an eye on the Brooklyn Nets, not just for basketball, um, but because of what they're doing with the metaverse. Um, they <clears throat> have already been partnered up with NBA Top Shot. Uh, if you know what NBA Top Shot is, it's just basically like a um, um, NFT playing card thing for you know basketball players and everything. So from there, um, uh, other players and other teams and stuff like that are actually going to start jumping into what they feel the metaverse is like. And then, of course, the whole entire NBA will kind of make its own thing as well. Uh, so I believe we're going to see a whole lot coming out of this. All righty. So the next thing that we have here is what exactly is ERC-721, ERC-1155, or I'll just say 1155, and then also ERC-20. Uh, I have an article here. And the reason why I put up this article is because they do a pretty good job at explaining what uh, ERC token standards are in the first place, uh, but they don't mention the ERC 20. So I, I'm going to go over to this other, uh, link here as well. And of course, as always, all these links will be in the description below, uh, the, in the YouTube video. But so what is the significance of ERC token standards in crypto landscape ERC or what they call them Ethereum requests for comments? It's basically a technical document that provides specifications for the methods, innovation, research, and traits for a specific group of users in the Ethereum ecosystem. The ERC token standards, such as ERC721 and ERC1155, offer explanations for different rules pertaining to ERC tokens on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, most important of all, the Ethereum community, now get this, the Ethereum community contributes to amendments in the rules oops, uh, of the token standards after a comprehensive review. As of now, the three most popular ERC token standards are ERC-20, ERC-721, and ERC-1155, which is actually pretty new, uh, or the newest one on the blocks. I think it came out like in 2019 or something like that, maybe. Um, I read that somewhere here. Um, so yeah, so the main thing about this is that there are different basically rules and standards as to how these different ERC tokens get used on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, here is a good little breakdown here as a visual. It uh, does it nice and sweet and short. Uh, for one, the ease of use between, between 721 and 1155. 721 allows for individual transactions and smart contracts. 
uh, for each token type, but ERC-1155 actually allows for one single smart contract for multiple different functions. Uh, batch transfers, ERC-721 does not allow for batch transfer, meaning that you cannot transfer multiple NFTs at once, but ERC-1155 does allow you to transfer multiple ones at, at, um, at once to a, you know another wallet address. Uh, SFT. So if you haven't heard of SFTs, I'm probably going to do next week is going to be a, um, I think I have that down on my list as the word of the week, uh, for that. But SFTs are basically semi fungible tokens. So where it's not just a fungible token, it's not a NFT non fungible token. It's actually somewhere right in the sweet spot middles. Um, ERC 721 only supports the creation of non fungible tokens. So only NFTs. But if you want to look into doing SFTs, you probably want to get with the ERC-1155 um, um, standard there because they do allow for NFTs and also SFTs. Um, and then also security of assets. Uh, it is impossible to revert at transactions after you transfer them. So for example, if you make a incorrect transfer to another wallet address, you can't reverse that. But with the ERC-1155, it does allow for those mistakes that, you know, commonly humans do make. Um, so I'm going to go over here and jump to this one. Your guide to ERC-1155, comparing ERC-721 to ERC-1155. Um, so again, ERC-20, that was the first token standard that came out. Uh, that one is where basically they allow for all fungible items, fungible tokens and stuff like that to be transferred. So think of cryptocurrency. You can actually um, transfer one cryptocurrency for another one. It's fungible, just like the US dollar and, and stuff like that as well. From there, ERC-721 came out. So again, first came ERC-20, then came ERC-721. That came out with the rise of the NFTs. Uh, let me see if they get the and again, this isn't really fact checked by me. I'm just going by this. Uh, I'm just going by this here. Yeah. So ERC seven twenty one came out in two thousand seventeen when Crypto Kitties came out. So Crypto Kitties, if you don't know, was really big. It was way more popular than um, these board ape yacht clubs. Way more popular than the Crypto Punks. They they're the ones that they're the ones that started. It. <laughs> just to say that much. Um, so ERC seven twenty one when the NFT portion came out, everybody was doing the generative um, items there. They were only transferring one of ones, all that good stuff. So then they came out with the ERC-721 standard that allowed for those uh, different specs based on that. Um, and here we go here. It allows you to transfer NFTs between accounts, allowing NFTs to be traded for other currencies. It allows you to identify the total supply of the NFTs on that network. And it also allows you to query for the owners of the specific asset, so you can basically know every single person that owned the NFT from the beginning of the creation of that one NFT. Um, the ERC eleven fifty five is again, like I said, is a right in the middle sweet spot between the twenty ERC twenty and the ERC seven twenty one, because they also offer um, it, the creation of non fungible tokens, but also the creation of fungible tokens. Um, also with that, they allow for the SFTs, so the semi-fungible tokens as well. Um, let me see, because I think they have a... Uh, and this one actually came out with the engine project in two, yeah, 2019 is when uh, they introduced the token standard. Um, so unlike ERC-721, if you were to transfer multiple NFTs, you would have to do it in a single transaction, which is very expensive because you would have to do multiple smart contracts for each individual NFT. The ERC-1155 allows for batch transfers, multiple assets on one single smart contract that result in all tokens being transferred all at once, leading to a less congested network and consequently lower gas costs. Uh, another major feature of the multi-token standard is it supports both fungible and non-fungible tokens, which I mentioned, because it is, has the ability to support multiple states on the same address and contract. Uh, another thing is as well, ERC-1155 supports the creation of semi-fungible tokens uh, because they trade fungible tokens, but once redeemed, they convert over to NFTs. Um, again, we'll touch base on SFTs here probably next week. Um, and then the last thing that they, uh, um, that they mentioned is that these tokens transferred 
on the Stanford standard can be reverted in the event of a mistake. So if you accidentally send um, to a wrong address, you can say, hey, I didn't mean to send it to there. Please give that back and so on and so forth. And this is done by the safe transfer function, uh, which is something you guys need to look into as well. Not a lot of people are getting into the NFT space, but they aren't fully understanding what that means um, to do that. So there's a lot going on back behind here. Have any questions, please feel free to reach out and ask. Uh, but here's a quick little breakdown that I want to mention as well. ERC-1155 permits the creation of both semi-fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens, whereas ERC-721 permits only non-fungible tokens. In ERC-1155, smart contracts are linked to multiple URIs and do not store additional metadata, such as the file name. In comparison, 721 only supports the static data stored directly on the smart contract for each individual token ID. Uh, increasing deployment costs and limiting its flexibility. ERC-1155 smart contract supports an infinite number of tokens, whereas the 721 uh, needs a new smart contract for each in, uh, type of token. And then lastly, ERC-1155 also allows for batch transfers of tokens, which can reduce transaction costs and times. With ERC-721, if you want to send multiple tokens, they would have to happen individually. All right. So there's a lot to unpack there. Definitely a whole lot to unpack. Um, if you have any questions, again, please do feel free to reach out to me and let me know. Um, but the main thing is, what are you doing with your project? You know, before you actually create this NFT, what would you, would you like it to be like? Uh, or before you create any even token, it can be a fungible token, it can be a semi-fungible token, it can be a non-fungible token. You guys need to know what it is at first that you want to do in order for you to put it based on the correct standard. So when the smart contract is created, you are doing the right thing. You don't want to create a, um, a bunch of items, assets for like a video game or something like that. And you want to transfer all these items to a person and you created an ERC 721 because the ERC 721 only allows for one transfer of one item on each smart contract. So therefore you would have to create multiple smart contracts for that one transfer of a lot to that one person. You would want to do it on the 1155, which allows for those multiple transactions, bulk transfers and stamps, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, definitely look more into that if you are getting into the uh, NFT space. Uh, there's a lot to learn there, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot more um, coming out of it as well. Okay, so the next thing that we have here is Crocs. Foam shoe giant Crocs files NFT and digital collectibles trademark application. This was done in January uh, like 15th of 2022. So it is kind of old and I tried to do some more research on it. I tried to look into whether Crocs is actually doing anything with it. I think they're really just kind of playing the by ear seeing how this NFT space is kind of jumping off or they might be actually creating something. They might be doing the airdrop here soon. I didn't dig too deep into it, but this would be something to definitely look into here. Um, but what it is, uh, according to a recent trademark application, Crocs, the American shoe company company based in Colorado, may be delving into the world of non-fungible tokens. Since 2004, Crocs has sold 300 million pairs, yada, yada, yada. Um, a USPTO report filed on January 11, 2022. One thing I really want to know, guys, is who in the world is sitting on USPTO um, like website, just seeing who posts what, because there's a lot of stuff that gets posted on there for trademarks and patents and stuff like that. And I don't know how these people catch them, but they catch them pretty quickly. Uh, this was this was done on January 11th when I first heard of it um, coming out was like January the 14th. So like literally three days later, people knew about it. Uh, maybe because they're a public publicly traded company. I think I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, so everything they do is public. You know, so they have to broadcast, you know, what their business moves are and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. Anyways, um, the registration is intended to cover the categories of downloadable digital media, namely digital assets, digital collectibles, digital tokens, and non-fungible tokens. Um, it further continues by mentioning things like leveraging blockchain technology and smart contracts in order to showcase Crocs products. So yeah. Crocs is actually doing something in the NFT space. We just don't know what yet. Um, 
it's going to be quite interesting to see what they come out with. Crocs was a big company uh, and still is a pretty big company, especially in the younger generation, um, wearing them for like pretty much anything, everything, everywhere. Uh, so it's going to be quite interesting to see like, you know, what can they come up with? How are they going to utilize blockchain technology to, you know, create new Croc assets and stuff like that? Of course, they can provide Crocs to in-game uh, assets. So think of like, heck, you might be able to wear Crocs in my game. Uh, what's it called? Grand Theft Auto or whatever. Um, your character might pop out in some Crocs and stuff like that. But we don't know. We'll see. Well, that'll be something to uh, definitely keep an eye on to see what they have in store for the future there. Okay, and then the last one here is NVIDIA. So if you haven't heard of NVIDIA before, they are a basically computer hardware company. Uh, they make bomb um, graphics cards. So graphics cards basically like, you know, the visual stuff on your um, computer. The, the, everything that you see on the screen is ran by the graphics card. Usually, sometimes a CPU already has its own kind of like built-in uh, graphics on it. But if you're, if you're into gaming, you, you more than likely know what a graphics card is. If not, you probably have a graphics card in your computer or laptop, but you know just haven't really uh, got deep into what it, uh, what it actually is. Uh, but NVIDIA is a major company, uh, publicly traded, publicly held, and they create those graphics cards. Uh, they are really, 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 really good. They're actually creating their own quote unquote metaverse, and it's called the Omniverse. Uh, which I had to touch on. I don't think I did an episode on that yet, so I'm going to have to go actually do an episode on that as well. Um, wow, American Horror Stories. That just kind of creeped me out. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. So, yeah, so they are coming, or they already have a AI. This, this, I mean, this was been out for a while. I heard about this, but May 13th, 2022, um, was this when this article came out. And so, essentially, like I said, this is like a, a child's crayon drawing, right? They drew some mountains, what they thought looked like mountains. They drew some clouds up here at the top. Um, they drew some whatever this is. I'm assuming this blue stuff down here is water. This brown stuff is a rock. This might green stuff might be a tree and all that stuff. So what NVIDIA has done is that every single one of these items, they have a link over here on the right-hand side and say, hey, if you want to draw a cloud, use this icon, and they'll come up as a cloud. So after that, the AI, the artificial intelligence that they're using is actually transforming that into an actual landscaped image. Wow. <laughs> I mean, just, just think of how powerful that is. And now you're, we're going to watch this uh, YouTube video here real quick. And you're actually going to see a little bit how I want to, I probably should look for another video for you guys to look, but you guys can look it up as well. It's called NVIDIA Canvas. Just YouTube that and see how amazing some of the things people can come up with. It looks like I got to refresh the screen. That one might have froze up on me here. I play that full screen. So he's just drawing on the left hand side is going to be what you draw. And then on the right hand side is going to be what the AI draws. And everything looks so realistic. I mean, look at that. And you can import it from Canvas into Photoshop and really go to town with that. That's just amazing. Alrighty. Uh, and they actually have a couple of... Um, like, I don't call them sneak previews, but a couple of the ones that they've done before. So this is a cloudy sandscape right there that they drew um, using AI. Single shores, and I mean, look how detailed that sand is there, those grains of sand. Um, a desolate landscape here. You know, they probably put some water there. They put a little tree there. They put, you know, a sun rays up there, clouds and everything. And again, this is just an AI transforming this from just a, a basic sketch. Styles, 
Fields of Gold, Snowy Boot Prints, <clears throat> A Snowy Day, A Snowy View at Night. So they're doing night skies as well with stars and everything. Grains of Sand. Yeah, the power of AI here is good enough to create close-up views of grains of sand on a made-up beach. There are some blurry parts at the edges, but it could easily have been taken with a shaking hand and a smartphone or a bouquet styling. And I don't, I mean, I barely see the, <laughs> the shaky bits here and there. I mean, once you really start looking at it, yeah, you see it. But at first glance, I mean, this would, this is like amazing. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. Again, really big into AI technology. Stuff like that, I like. I really, really like stuff like that. Um, they do a very good job of keeping that, you know, um, I don't call it sane, but <laughs> they, in that sense, you can't really expect that to quote unquote take over the world um, or anything like that. So uh, stuff like that, I really do like. Let me know what you guys think about it yourselves. Uh, I myself am not an artist, but if they end up taking that, um, and making it into not just landscaping, but making it into like characters or um, architecture or anything else. I myself would actually probably be using that for, you know, just a couple of different projects um, that I would like to actually work on myself as well. But as a non-artist myself, I am not, uh, <laughs> I'm not that skilled on doing that. So helping with or with the help of some AI technology uh, would be a blessing in that case. So um, that is all I have for you guys here today. Please do check in with me on all my social media channels um, YouTube, of course, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all of that. Definitely check out all of the links inside of the description. If you have any questions in regards to anything, please do hit me up. Drop any notes in the comment. And until next time, I will see you all later. Have a good one.